I'm Steven Molesky and you're watching The Beauty Block. Hey guys, welcome to The Beauty Block and I'm very excited. Today I have the amazing and talented Steven Molesky. Steven, welcome. Where are you from originally? I know our audience wants to know a little bit about you beyond the artistry. I was born and raised in Sarasota, Florida. I went to Manti High School, uh, majored in um, art the time I did go to high school, <laughs> showed up. Um, and then I moved to Orlando, and shortly after moving there, I became friends with the drag queen mm -hmm. and then discovered makeup. Went to beauty school, dropped out, <laughs> and then um, picked up the brush and just ran with it pretty much. My first makeup professional job, well, I went to cosmetology school and then I dropped out of that. I wanted to go into Joe Belasco makeup school and they actually were gonna, um, it, I did the whole program where you um, did beauty but you have to do special effects and anyone that knows me, I'm a, I hate blood, I hate broken bones, I hate cuts, but I had to do it but I didn't want to do it for my final project so I did like a poison ivy without, uh, with uh, green goo instead of blood but that being said whenever I got out of school I went to came to Atlanta and my first paid job was working for Don Shaw at the perimeter mall actually Oh, nice! so that was like a pro professional job but professional like got the bug was the first year that he took me to New York for fashion week and I kind of like I was able to like create a look and um, you know dragging the kit in the snow and getting that whole vibe and yeah. I knew one thing I never wanted to work in New York but I wanted to do makeup <laughs> Yes, uh, I've lived in New York and it, it's not fun in the winter months. Yeah, there, this, there's no elevators in most of the studios. No. And <laughs> so it kept me in Atlanta a lot more and then I wound up going to LA. Oh, nice, nice. So. Uh, so when you started out makeup artistry, you know, what are some challenges you faced as a young artist back then? Well, I think that the one thing that I, ch I you were trying to get your, your name out there and I came from the generation where like you were only as good as what job you were able to obtain and you didn't have the social network you didn't have the social media that was so easy to put your your portfolio out there like I remember when I moved to LA I was bringing my 11 by 14 book dropping it off at the agency and they're all like boom boom no sorry or like giving you like small jobs here and there that weren't you know paying your bills so it's very hard to get your name out there but the one thing that I think that a lot of this generation misses is that the hard work and the the you're only as good as your last job yeah. and like if you the day like I've had an agent once and I it wasn't a good experience and I've, from then I've always had every single job since I I just worked with the Backstreet Boys like I've, it was all word of mouth and that's what I've always relied on and it's really something where people a lot of the people coming up with the career now I think that they don't have it is hard because it's so easy like here's my work and it's instant like mm -hmm. oh I got 600 likes which I'm always battling like getting the numbers up mm -hmm. but also I work I've been working for 20 years and so like I think that that I have a lot of pride in like what I and the connection I make with my clients mm -hmm. um, but also the pride that like I don't I stand for a certain level of integrity with my work and don't you know take a lot of jobs that I don't fit yeah. so yeah and so in terms of you getting to where you are now um, what are some steps that you take what motivated you to get to where you are today like I said I, I, I was raised with parents they both worked my dad was a um, truck driver my mom was a medical um, nurse and they always had talked about how much they worked and how they you know they loved their job but they hated their job and they were always away from and busy 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 and I knew that I needed to work hard, but I wanted to find something that I loved doing. And it just, whenever I was able to do it, and I was able to really give something that like, when I get do a makeup, I know that that's nobody else, they, everyone can do makeup, but nobody can give them the experience that I can give them. And so like, it's, you know, yes, it's putting on the foundation, yes, it's putting on the lashes, and yet, but it's also like being able to customize and, you know, learn the person's, um, insecurities right off the bat and like thinking like humbling yourself to like take on what they what's best for them in that moment whether it's a good pep talk or like you know coverage of concealer yeah, yeah. so so what do you think about the Atlanta <clears throat> um, TV film industry currently um, how do you see your place in there I think my place in um, 
you know, I think Atlanta's on the rise for, it's, it, whenever I left Atlanta and moved to LA, Atlanta was trying to be LA. And then I, you know, I was in LA for seven years and I went to Australia for a few years. And then I came back to Atlanta because of family and also because, you know, the, the, everyone was like, it really has changed and it really has changed. You know, I think my place is in Atlanta is I bring a lot of education and I bring the experience of like what LA and international training is or what the international market is. And so that I think my niche is definitely, I came back in the first place to educate <clears throat> and then also to have, you know, the thing I love and do is, you know, doing makeup. Um, but I've also, you know, the last three years I've been working with Anissa, or the uh, last three years I worked with Anissa International designing cosmetic brushes with them and doing education with on that level. So I've kind of like found my niche with, you know, corporate level um, partnerships and then also being able to be, you know, a high-end makeup artist. You know, a lot of people, you know, there's there's a lot of makeup artists in, in, in Atlanta. I don't know, like there's a lot of celebrities, but there's, you know, there's not a lot of education on the level of like, Fin finesse training, um, so yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So tell me, um, for you personally, how do you defer? I mean, what's the experience like for you between working on a production and working with a private client? I'm I've always, even whenever I was in LA, I've always been a personal makeup artist in the sense. So like I do, I've done a lot of productions. I've done movies. But it's always been geared to the one client. So I haven't worked on a lot of productions here. Um, like when I moved back from uh, Australia, I was working um, with the housewife, and then I was working on some f different productions, um, and then I started working for Anissa, and so I went into the corporate. But um, you know, I think it's I I always get different jobs being thrown to me, but like the last three years I was working for corporate and then also taking like some of my celebrity clients whenever I could fit them in, but I've just recently, in the last two months, been I decided to get back to full-time makeup, so that's why you probably also see my Instagram going up and there's a lot more of my personal stuff and my, my blood and passions there. Absolutely. So I know my first experience with a celebrity I was like starstruck. What was your first experience like and who was that person for you? So my first, um, well, it's gonna date me. So my first, well, my first celebrity I ever worked with was Brooke Burke. Was it Brooke Burke? Brooke Burke. And she barely wanted to work with me. And then um, that was in Atlanta. And I think I powdered her, like, did, it was one of those where like she, it was, I was hired for the job, but because I was, she didn't know who I was. I was just literally an attendee to powder her nose. <laughs> the first celebrity I did was the girls, uh, on, when I was working on Girls Next Door, and it was um, Hef's Girlfriends um, that, on that platform, because I was like three, four weeks into LA, and just, I had a, had a, a friend that was, had done a music video with, um, Carmen Electra, mm -hmm. not music video, workout video. And we had befriended each other and then through word of mouth, Bridget from um, Hef's girlfriend at the time needed a, a makeup artist and saw what I did for one of the parties and then it was like a steamroller. But that was more of the, the surreal being around it. But I, um, I've never, the only person I've ever been starstruck with is uh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, okay. Hugh Jackman was, I couldn't speak, and it's, my friends in Australia, they're like, it's the funniest thing, because I was like, just dumbfounded. Yeah, I totally understand that. But I don't, I haven't gotten, I, I haven't gotten starstruck, even whenever I, um, even with Kim, I, whenever, the day that I met, I didn't even know who Kim was. Yeah. I, and it, I've always been like, whether, one of the things I think also with, what's kept my career going is that like, Money is money, and a face is a face. It's all about, like I said, giving the experience and get, being able to give that one power that I have yeah. with the makeup and so doing well. it. Because any job, it, it, you never know where your job's going to come from. Yeah. So. so I know you're one of the original YouTubers. Tell me a little bit about that. So I didn't know I was a YouTuber. So um, I remember it very clearly because I was working with. Kim. I remember with Kim and me whenever we started working. It was just a whirlwind, but um, 
we both were talking because people were starting to like, it was the MySpace days and, you know, like the whole ranking of friends and who's the most popular. And then, you know, it was the first time people had seen makeup in an interview and these beautiful women. And so like, it was every week we're like, well, what look are we going to do now? And it was like this smoky eye and the, the I think we had the, the baby doll look and then the Kimmel was because there was like this blue smoky gold, like, I mean, crazy makeups, but um, her fans were asking like, how did I do and this and that. So I remember she was just like, we're going to do a video. And I'm like, okay. And I showed up to do her makeup and she's like, oh, we're filming it. And then 25 million follow or like like views later it w went out and it was just like a sensation because it was the first time that people like knew who I was mm -hmm. and um, I still look back at it and I'm like I don't even know who that is <laughs> talk about a 10 year challenge so. um, but yeah no it's the it's kind of funny um, there's a couple of people that it, since I've been back out really on social media that put two and two together because I look well, I do look a lot different I'm about 25 pounds bigger and um, tw 50, 20, no, 50, 11 years? Yeah, 11 years ago. Um, but I never knew that it, that it would start that craze, but it's also kind of cool because, granted, there's so many people that are doing it like a yeah. million times better than we ever did it. But just to see that, pe it, that did spark that makeup tutorial and people wanting to show people how to do a look. So I know that, I think Kim and me, it was the first celebrity makeup tutorial. Yeah, I, I know that a lot of young people there, you know, you are an influence on them and, and starting the old YouTube generation. You know, what would you say to those young people today? What would I say to them today mm -hmm. that are starting out and doing it? I would just say that stay true to yourself. And um, I mean, I my husband will tell you that I'm like OCD and a perfectionist, but he's also got me to especially because I'm trying to get back into that market. Like I, I put things out and I'm like, I only got like two, a thousand views or this. It's like so mo like minimal compared to what everyone else does. But at the same time, like it's only about connecting with one or two people because the likes don't matter, the follows don't matter. It's the fact that like you could change somebody's career. Uh, but I would just say staying true and kind of like figuring out who you are and what you represent. I represent like clean, uh, technique like beauty like you'll never see like you'll see a balance like I love pops color but there's always a, a it's always blended and clean and um, a certain aesthetic and I stuck with that always and like you know it's sometimes you know people think it's type passive but I'd rather that's just who I am like I like clean beautiful balanced um, applications but so stay, finding your finding what you love to do and just perfecting it and growing and um, and, and just sit, always knowing that you're influencing someone with what you do absolutely and w would you say that is your signature go to that clean pretty beauty well I was having to rewrite my bio and I said that like my composition of the face so like always finding balance in the face the usage of color and um, uh, blending was it? It's the use of color composition, like being able to proportion the face out, um, which is like an artistry technique. Like whenever you see them, you know, balance the face. Uh, so composition, color, and I want to say balance of the look. Mm -hmm. But that's it, literally it's aesthetically like that whole Kevin Aquan. It's like you know, my my husband was we were watching the, his movie, and it's like he was like, oh my god, it's so to see his aesthetic and your aesthetic he's like you totally were inspired by him I'm like because yeah it's just that classic like just making every woman look the most amazing and finding that finding what no matter what they look or whatever their imperfections are and being able to correct them and um, enhance them the most important aspect of an application is the complexion hands down um, I, we're in a generation that people are like more is more is more is more and I you know I love the fact that like I just did a bride, a, a South um, Asian bride, who has very dark circles, and like when she, we put the picture up on Instagram, like everyone was just like, oh, she's so pretty, and nobody said anything about like heavy makeup or high heavy contour or anything, and she had all of it, but it's just seamless because it makes it look like them and not like they're wearing a mask. Absolutely, so. absolutely. I know um, there have been many articles written about you. Um, 
how do you feel about those articles? You know, you've accomplished so much and you've inspired so many people. How does that make you feel? I think it's always cool. I, you know, I, only whenever I dig into like people, like I had a, a girl today was just like, I met you for five minutes and it was the most amazing thing. And I was like, what? I'm like, tell me when, because I, it, it's, 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 so, it's such a roller coaster. Um, but like looking back, it's really cool to have those moments. Um, and I mean, the, my 39 year old self uh, wishes that I would have documented more of the things that I did because my early career was so fast. And now I'm like having all of that and I'm rebranding myself into a whole different market, but also where it's more about me as a brand and what I've done and what I can do for others. Um, because that's where, you know, I've, I've had product lines and I've, might have product lines mm -hmm. and being able to really establish what I've learned in the first part of my career and really um, show what I've got to come because it's, awesome. it's a fun it's a fun situation but to look back at the sorry I'm completely off topic to look back at the articles it's it's good momentum but I also or I always say that word um, it's good moment mementos Mementos, yeah. I'm like, no, it's not a breath mint. Um, mementos um, <laughs> that I can, you know, uh, document like where I've come and how far I've come. Yeah. Sometimes I don't like, like when you posted that video, I was like, oh my God, that is, <laughs> it's really cool. Um, but it's also mind blowing because like where what I said there was like 25 million views on like video one of the four. And now people have like 20, like 250 million views on a, a video, and I'm like, that just blows my mind. Um, it is the generation of the YouTubers and the videos. Um, so I know you've traveled quite a bit. How do you think your travels influence you as an artist? I think that like, just as a person and as an artist, my being able to travel the world and experiencing different cultures and different um, ways of cultures and, and travels. Um, one has made me realize how good I have it <laughs> and also being able to adapt very quickly and um, you know, being very pride. I have a lot of pride of what I've done and what I've accomplished, but like being able to also be humble and knowing whenever you're like, you know, there was a time where with um, Mel B, we were traveling 16,000 miles a week and we were going from London to Sydney to New York and then back and like just still being gracious like you know you're going into another set you're going to another person you're, like you're having to be around other people and it's not all about you yeah. um, and just in different cultures because I mean like dealing with British people and their cultures and then going to Australia and Australians are very inviting and very welcoming but you know as an American Americans are very cocky even if you think you're not and um, and arrogant compared to a lot of countries, so <laughs> it's humbling in some sense. Good, but. good. So tell me, um, what is the next thing on your list to conquer? To conquer? I don't know if I have anything that I want to conquer, because I've done, I think I'm at a point where um, I just really want to put out me and put out 100% me. Like I started getting into photography, not because I don't love working with amazing photographers, but I just see a vision and sometimes, as we all know, that we can't do that on every single client or we don't have time for it. And I have, you know, in my, the luxury, we just, me and my husband just bought a house. I have a full studio and Congrats. a makeup room and it's like, the lights come on and it's like, it's like this here and being able to create and, um, and really, I mean, maybe it's gonna be inspiring to like a lot of people to see a different aspect of, you know, and I always joke that we're like going to be the Desi Perkins and Steve Perkins of the gay makeup world. And, but like, because he does my videos and I do the makeup and, but just, um, what I'm coming up is just showing truly who I am. And, um, I've got a lot of things I don't want to like, I've got a lot of plans, but I, as far as conquering, I think that's too, um, final, fin final, final, finaling of the statement. Um, I just have a lot to show still. Excellent. So in terms of, I know you've worked with a lot of brands. What mm -hmm. are some of your favorite ones you've worked with? 
As, well, that's so, I mean, so I love a lot of different brands for a lot of different reasons. I really love, um, I love brands that have passion for what they stand for and integrity for what they stand for. I really love Beauty Blender because um, one, Rayanne is the, everything she puts her, her passion into is amazing. Um, and I use them and um, the foundation that they just came out with is amazing as people want to watch my Instagram. But um, I love NARS is probably my go-to just because I'm so big on complexion and I love the way that the texture and the look and the, the skin looks um, and how I can manipulate the products. I'm a, I come from where I love really heavy pigmented um, concentrated formulas that can go and be sheared down and manipulated and um, tweaked and mixed with a, you know, mix a primer in with a full coverage and get a super uh, luminous um, finish. Um, what else do I love? I love Face Atier um, for my sheer. Um, nude Sticks is a really big one that I love. I just love the fact that they're um, two young girls that are uh, killing the industry and they're really great and then everybody's they're they're um they're good quality products because I, like i said i like putting on i like i'm big in complexion so a lot of products that can be layered um who else do i have that huh yeah. oh yeah veils um i like their primer um smashbox is great I mean, there's a little bit of everything. I mean, I, I, they're, Becca, their hydrating um, powder and um, their hot liquid highlighters are amazing. That's it's like hard to say one thing. One thing, yeah. <laughs> no, I still walk through the Walmart and I'm looking at colors because yeah. we're so addicted to colors. Yeah, there's a, uh, uh, <laughs> trying to go through all my things that are my go-to. Um, I know I'm gonna forget somebody. I, there's a, I dabble in a lot of things and I'm, and I'm grateful that like I do get a lot of things sent to me um, so I get to try them out. Um, Charlotte Tilbury, she's amazing. Um, expensive, but really amazing. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit of everything. Excellent. So there are a lot of beauty trends that, that are emerging now. Um, do you see any that's gonna be the new big thing in, in beauty? Well, I think that the highlighting contouring craze is always gonna be around, but let me say this from working in a corporate um, brand aspect is that whatever is the people need to push and sell is going to be the next trend. So there's always going to be a reemergence of the same thing. I think complexion, like I tell everyone, is learn your complexion, learn your aesthetic, what you stand for. Like I have a certain look. You'll always see every one of my pictures. There's really nothing that's going to ever be shocking because it's just that's like people always like, oh, well, you do pretty work, of course. Like, but. Um, Complexion is always the one that, whether it's you know sculpted or illuminating or that, um, that's here for here to stay. Um, and I just think that, you know like blushes are really uh, I love the, the the blush trends coming back a lot. Um, but I don't know to me also I've never followed trends. Mm -hmm. um, I follow, like I said, I go back to the color and the color theory and the composition and however anything falls in there like. You know, I'll get lashes sent to me, and I'm like, okay, let's see how I can incorporate them and try them out and see if I like them. And um, you know, absolutely. So you get to uh, sorry, you get to a point where like, if you do something, well, then you just say, oh, it's on trend, and then sometimes it is, it is. And sometimes yeah. it isn't. <laughs> Tell All us right. about that, and and I know you're starting to, you know explore that full time now. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been doing that since I've been back in the last four years. I've always been um, having classes. I actually had three conference calls today about doing different um, types of classes. I'm going to be doing, um, Nor Costco is gonna, having um, me do another class in May. And then I always like to do um, different education for specifics like I'm doing a South a um, Asian bride bridal class with NARS because you know gearing it just towards corrective makeup um, but I just am trying to find my niche where I feel like there I can bring a lot of support without having it be diluted mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm in a position where I can partner and I can use my resources and use my marketing and you know 
having obviously I have to make a living, but having it where it's um, obtainable, to, like quality education that's obtainable to um, up and coming makeup artists or people that want to build their technique. And you know, I love my, I have, always have great sponsors. <laughs> so how come, how can our viewers um, find these classes? Is there a, a link or? Follow me on uh, artistry by Steven underscore. Um, and I always am posting things on there. And I do private lessons. I have, a, I have my studio at my house. So I do one-on-ones, you know, I think three is about the most I do at one time. Um, and then I've, I try and do like some type of class about every two months. Awesome, awesome. So on a, on a different note, I know you're a big animal lover. Yes. Do you have any pets? I have four pit bulls. <laughs> yes. Four, four pit bulls that I was giving a bath to 20 minutes before I left here because they love the new backyard, but they are digging a hole to China. So, <laughs> tell me your passion. Uh, your passion about your pets. Uh, well, it's not my pets. Is I have always had a place for kids, and I've had a place for animals. And through working with Anissa International, I really was able to get uh, involved in partnerships with um, Families First and um, Lifeline. And Lifeline, two of my dogs are from, um, and so they're all rescues. But I just find it. Children and pets don't have a voice, and um, so anything that I can do to bring um, support, I really get behind. And um, I'm, we're both foster fails twice, but in a sense we're winners. But um, I just have a, I've always try and give back or try and help. And um, I'm actually doing, I think it'll be announced by the time this is out. I'm gonna be doing the Eden Celebrity Dance. Um, competition where we're raising money for children with eating disorders so they can get proper treatment and that's actually something my real estate agent um, had asked me a couple years in a row to do and I'm mortified of dancing mm -hmm. but at the same sense I thought it was a really good way of me you know doing something on a bucket list yeah. raising money for a good cause Absolutely. people get a lot of entertainment watching me do it on um, <laughs> live and then um, it goes to a good cause but also in the sense that social media is so, if you don't have a, your good head on your shoulders and believe in yourself, a lot of kids can get sucked into different things of like having to attain a certain look and have a certain um, aesthetic to them or feeling less than, and um, they run into eating disorders and of all ages. So this is just something where it can work to help people out. Excellent, excellent. So where do you see yourself in the next five years? The next five years, well, definitely in the house we just bought. Um, but no, the next five years, I um, I see myself doing a lot more of what I love to do, which is um, educating, getting really, um, hoping to bring something with the beauty, like the true beauty aspect. Um, you know, there's a lot of amazing people I aspire to to from like um, makeup artists the crossover into photography and I don't ever really want to get into that but like I just see myself um, maybe doing like a beauty book or beauty education crossover so people can understand like how makeup translates into the photography because I know that just even me dabbling in, in the last six months I'm like wow if makeup artists knew how to communicate that to the photographer and not just oh this is how it's going to be um, it's really um, impactful and um, there's a lot of people doing it that are around the country but you know maybe bring a little bit more of that here I don't know we'll see I, I listen to my fans and listen to people's um, what's going on in the world and just kind of like always change and adapt and um, just make sure I continue doing what I love to do all right so if you could go back and give your 20 year old self some advice what would it be Oh my God, there's so many things that I wish. I believe it or not, I never really believed in myself until I hit like rock bottom with, I went through a really bad divorce and a, a dark period of my time and like I had to like re-believe in myself. Um, I wish that I would have had started sooner and been smarter. Um, that's probably... Because I never really, like, my, I, my parents were, you know, I never, like, was one where, like, well, we wish you this or that. I just wish that I, like, had a little bit more belief in myself and a little bit more confidence that I have now 
than whenever I was first starting out because I was, I remember a lot of people being like, you're way too nice. And it wasn't that I was too nice. I was just, literally, I didn't yet believe that I could be what I am. Um, and sometimes I still am like, oh, sh shit. Like, I, cause I don't, I also don't have that wrapped up in my head where I'm like, oh, I'm Stephen Molesky. I'm like, sometimes I have to tell myself that. My husband might think that I'm lying, but, I, but there is those times where I'm like, it's just, you, you know, stay, I'm staying humble. But, um, but I wish I believed in myself a little bit more at a younger um, time. One, I wish I believed in myself, and I wish I didn't believe in what people, what people told me, like as advice. I wish I didn't take every, every single thing as like they were the end all be all. Because I had a lot of people like, were baiting me for failure. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't believe myself, I was listening to them instead of being like confident enough to listen to myself. So I want to thank you, Stephen, for being with us today. It was a pleasure talking with you. you and too. definitely, guys, stay tuned and watch this amazing, talented gentleman. And we look forward to seeing what he's going to do next. Follow me. <laughs>